Welcome to this market update with Pila Pharma, an innovative biotech company developing a tablet-based treatment uh, of obesity and diabetes. Uh, yesterday, the market uh, received a press release uh, that Pila Pharma enters into an agreement with the CRO Gubra on preclinical trials uh, of their candidate in obesity. To get more information about this, I'm happy to welcome CEO of Pila Pharma, Gustav H. Graham. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to have you here again. Nice to be back. Uh, you have had an intense spring and <laughs> summer with a lot of things going on, uh, not least because of your bet on obesity. Uh, could you give us a brief on the company and the events up until yesterday's news? Yeah, sure. So um, for those of us who have not seen the previous interviews that we've done here, of course, um, we are a, a company that are uh, developing a novel kind of uh, treatment for uh, type 2 diabetes, but also now obesity. So we have uh, previously conducted uh, clinical trials in type 2 diabetes uh, with, with uh, good, good results, in, uh, both in the sense of efficacy, but also in the sense of safety. Um, but of course, nowadays, the whole market is transitioning towards obesity treatments. So um, we have, uh, from the start of the year, uh, been engaging and talking to uh, companies in, in the pharma pharmaceutical industry, like big, very big companies that are all wishing to play a part in this tremendous market opportunity that it is. Uh, and they have all come forward and told us, like, look, this is interesting. It has a different approach, um, but we would like to see some obesity data. So we took that, um, that notion back to our board and said, look, we think we need to make a bet on this. Um, and, uh, and subsequently, that's what we did. We had to, f to figure out how to finance it. Um, we, we thought for some time around how should it be best structured, like, and we came to the conclusion that it would be best to conduct some uh, in vivo studies, that means it's in, 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 in animal models, in this case in rats, and subsequently, of course, pending good results, then we could move, move into uh, to clinical studies in humans living with, with overweight or obesity, but not uh, other comorbidities such as diabetes or cardiovascular disease. Um, so this we, we did uh, during the summer, uh, when everyone else was on holiday, mostly. Uh, I was here in the studio a couple of times and it was, uh, it was great. And we had tremendously good support. The, the, the rights issue we came forward with of units was almost underwritten to 100%. And I think that was also partly the reason why there was such a big support uh, from, from the market as a whole um, to participate. So we almost ended up with 300% uh, subscription, uh, so significant oversubscription. Uh, which allows us to, of course, move forward with our strategy now um, to execute on, on, on this plan that we have set uh, forward to investors. So um, it's, been, uh, it's been eventful, and since uh, the conclusion, we have been in motion to, to see if we could get the details sorted with, with Gubra that uh, we now announced. Um, that has been ongoing as well since July, as we mentioned in the press release. Um, and we have now found out that we um, have come to agreement to, to conduct two different um, uh, studies in rats in two different models uh, that should um, very much so give us a very comprehensive data set, uh, we believe. Uh, so we could, yeah, fo hopefully move into clinical trials in obesity next year. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what exactly are the next steps? So the next steps for us is, uh, now that we announced the, the, this preclinical uh, collaboration with Gubra, uh, is for the studies to get started, of course. Uh, preparations are ongoing, so there's two different types of rats in the study. One is a DIO uh, rat, which is one that you uh, pre-feed, so you feed them on, high fat, on a high-fat diet for a long time up to the point where you start the study. Uh, and the other one is, is what's called the sucker rat model, which are uh, a rat that has a, a genetic uh, deficiency that means that they will uh, not stop eating. So <laughs> you can keep them uh, on, a, on, a, on a normal diet, but of course you're looking to see whether you can, crease, you can decrease their, um, their intake. Mm -hmm. um, so, so this is two different models that, that can pair very well to give you a, a good uh, idea of how it, uh, this uh, drug performs in, mm -hmm. in an obesity setting. So that will be commencing. Uh, quite soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, the anticipation is that when the study starts, it will take a month mm -hmm. until you, uh, you get results. And, um, and so far, uh, the communicated timelines, both in the report as well as what we communicated yesterday, they stick. So um, we do anticipate that we will have the full data um, in time for this Warren component that came with the uh, rights issue in the summer. Mm -hmm. So overall, it's, uh, it's exciting times, but it will also be very hectic in the next few months.
Mm. So the feedback you have received from Big Pharma and potential partners, yeah. uh, these data will meet their uh, demands, so to speak. Well, at least from a quality perspective, we think uh, it, you know the choice of Gubra. I mean, they came at direct uh, recommendation from some of these big pharma companies. So we do think that having a partnership with a, a company that is specialized in uh, obesity preclinical trials. Uh, will be beneficial for us to to achieve the most uh, high quality data set that we can we can achieve, um, and subsequently, of course, um, moving into clinical studies uh, will perhaps uh, require a different uh, partner. Um, but 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 here and now, uh, we think it's a testament to us um, taking in. Uh, not just the recommendations, but also the advice from Big Pharma to, to go for quality rather than, than necessarily speed or, or cost. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's, that's, that's the, 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 the thinking behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, given that you uh, reached positive results, uh, what is your strategy going forward? Is it licensing, partnering, or would you even raise uh, capital to move on by yourselves? It, de it depends on the data, right? I mean, if it comes out and it's uh, fantastic, then uh, of course we have, we have better options, uh, very likely. Um, I mean, it's it's hard to predict how, how the financial markets will, will judge uh, and how the, the stock price will, will move. Um, but the plan that we have set forward is that um, pending uh, good results, we anticipate that uh, that you know that there will be a positive share development, and then those that have participated in the rise issue in the summer, they have these warrants that will trigger in February of 2026. Mm. So we anticipate that if we are at a certain level. And we can get full subscription. We could get up to 90, up towards 90 million uh, Swedish kronas uh, further, which should enable us to actually finance both clinical studies in obesity uh, as a standalone, and then in people with uh, overweight or obesity and type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. um, so, but we have seen other companies in the space that have had good results and then have uh, gone out and raised a lot of capital or. Um, uh, or alternatively also outlicensed straight away. So there's many uh, options and possibilities, but uh, for now we stick to the plan that we've communicated and if things change, of course, um, then we will, we will communicate that to the market. Hmm. Uh, I wanted to discuss the uh, addressable market. I read in your material that is one billion uh, people uh, with obesity. Correct. And four billion with overweight. Yeah. That's like almost half the population. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. The globe. And how could you could you yeah. elaborate a bit on this? Yeah, I mean that that is of course uh, uh, it's kind of mind-boggling mm. at times to study these numbers. And one of the things that was also interesting, which we have not uh, mentioned uh, in our report or or press release, is that the UNICEF uh, a, a few weeks uh, back came out with a report saying that now uh, childhood obesity is a bigger problem that, than, uh, than 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 kids that are starving. Um, so, so it is really uh, foundational, uh, a foundational problem on a global basis, uh, where we have, um, you know, kids developing obesity and, and the subsequent diseases at a very early stage, and will have to live with that for the rest of their lives. So, the market does not appear to be coming smaller, but ha but what we do see is, of course, that new solutions are coming forward now to to address this enormous. Uh, this enormous market. So what we have now is, of course, these very potent injectable solutions that are very good if you want to lose a lot of weight in a short amount of time. But they also come with some uh, side effects. Uh, and of course, there's a high cost to some of them as well. Um, and ultimately, there's really high discontinuation rates for these types of products. So the, the entire industry as such are, are looking now to see how can we come forward with new solutions that are more scalable, more accessible in the sense of not just being uh, available for price, but also you know that you are not uh, risking uh, taking in a product that could become in shortage at some point. Um, so, so there's many different aspects to it, but I think we're really uh, tapping into a niche here where we have something that is vastly different in the sense of the mechanism that we target. It's an oral solution, so it's a tablet, and the market is, of course, uh, gigantic uh, if you can scale it enough and, and actually um, meet those uh, patients that are, that are out there. Um, besides the difference in distribution, pills versus mm -hmm. injection, yeah. uh, what other difference uh, are there between your candidate and the existing GLP-1s? Yes, yeah, so GLP-1s are of course uh, mimicking a gut hormone, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas ours is, is actively trying to um, block the activity at a, this receptor called T or PV-1. This is a receptor that is found on all your sensory nerves throughout the body and your organs, etc. Um, and it plays a very crucial role in, 
in regulation of inflammation and inflammation plays a very big part of uh, your metabolic system of course mm. so we believe that if we can inhibit this uh, inflammatory activity that occurs when you have excess body weight then we do think that uh, that would be very uh, beneficial for patients um, maybe in the sense of, of also losing body weight that we will see soon um, but of course nowadays um, what we also hear in the industry is that we have cracked the code for big heavy weight loss now so we should not talk so much about weight loss, but more about what health gain can patients get. Mm -hmm. And that is not necessarily achieving 30% body loss. It could, be, uh, it could be maybe 10 to 15% instead, but having, you know, achieving better uh, body composition, mm -hmm. that's the next stage for, mm -hmm. for the industry. Ne not losing muscles, et cetera. And Something like this, like but also improving, improving organ function. There's many different aspects mm -hmm. to it. You see all these associated diseases like cardiovascular disease, liver disease, kidney disease. Mm -hmm. Those are the diseases that kill people ultimately. It's not, the, it's not the overweight, right? But it's the overweight that leads to the condition that kills them. Uh, will there also be differences in uh, expected side effects? Oh, yes. So, I mean, of course, GLP-1s uh, as well as, as, um, as amylin and, and, and GIP, which are all gut hormones, uh, they, um, they often come with uh, gastrointestinal side effects, so nausea, diarrhea, constipation, etc. We do not anticipate to have any uh, of this, if, if, if only very, very little, uh, I suppose. The, 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 um, the side effects that we anticipate and we have seen previously has been more sensory based. So th this is a receptor that again is, sense, is based on your sensory nerves. So it's more of a summing in your fingers or in your lips as if you have been to the dentist or if, as if you have been in the sauna for too long or you know, something that activates your receptors. Um, so, so it's a completely different uh, side effect profile which we think uh, could be beneficial of course uh, in a very competitive space going forward. And potentially, given that we have a small molecule, it could be combined with something else to achieve maybe, let's say, a more optimized weight loss profile, but also a more balanced side effect profile. So there's many different applications for this. Okay, thank you. And if you were to elaborate a bit on risk, uh, uh, what can you say about them? Yeah, of course, it's biotech, right? So there's always risks. And, and this next study is, is of course, bin binary in the sense of whether we achieve weight loss or not, uh, or achieve this proof of concept, as it's called. Um, that is, of course, something investors should, should note for themselves. But that being said, of course, the potential is also uh, huge. Um, and uh, I can say so much that, that myself as the CEO, as well as the entire board uh, and our biggest investors, they are all really doubled down in this rights issue in the summer. We all have a, a foundational belief that this uh, will work. Um, and, um, and we're all very heavily invested, at least. Um, but of course, it's important to note that we do also have um, data from diabetes and cardiovascular disease. So in case it doesn't pan out the way we expect, uh, we do have uh, alternative paths that we can pursue uh, in order to uh, achieve something meaningful with this drug candidate that is, uh, that is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, do you have any final remarks, Gustav? How would you sum it up to investors? Oh, um, I think it's, uh, of course, we're, we're really happy now that we can you know, we have, we've been uh, trying to lift this, uh, <laughs> this, this, uh, this plane in the air for some time. And we've really succeeded with that now in the sense of both getting the capital to fuel us, but now we're also executing on everything that we have set forward. So we have, uh, we've moved ahead, we've signed a contract with, with what I would call a top tier CRO in this space. Uh, and now we are going to uh, hopefully achieve as good a data set as we can, we, we can get uh, in a preclinical setting in order for us to have the best cards in our hands uh, for uh, subsequent uh, partnership ne negotiations or capital raising uh, opportunities, uh, as well as, as the planning for, for the future clinical trials. So all in all, very exciting opportunity. Uh, of course, it's biotech. So um, the, the, you know, the, the upside is, is big, but it, but it can also uh, go the other way. But that being said, I think, um, in my own opinion, I fail to see many uh, opportunities in the Nordic market that are as uh, potentially compelling as, as ours could be. Mm. Uh, Gustav H. Graham, uh, CEO of Opila Pharma, good luck going forward. Thank you so much.